How is everyone doing out there today? Welcome back to Wildcat MTG. Today we have a Double Masters 2022 draft box, and I think today is going to be an interesting opening. Uh, this is the last box of a sealed inner case, so six boxes, and this is the last of those six boxes. And thus far, uh, we have yet, I've yet to hit like a Damnation, which is only at the rare level. I have not opened a, opened a Consecrated Sphinx, um, no Dockside, no Imperial Seal. Um, very, very steady, even good box openings, but like no home run box, but also no tragically bad box either. Um, so I haven't hit any of that stuff yet. Simultaneously, the, the rest of this has been filled with, I think I've pulled like four or five Teferi's Protections, Smothering Tithes, Divining Tops, two or three Kozilex. So very, very even uh, open openings, but also like the same cards. So we're going to find out whether the, this last box in that sealed inner case is, is going to be Feast or Famine. And uh, with that being said, let's do what we do and let's crack some packs. So Double Masters continues to hold pretty steady. Uh, as of the filming of this video, these boxes are still sitting at around about three ten, uh, about three hundred ten dollars per box uh, market value. Singles are kind of where you would want them to be. I mean, for a Masters product, and what I mean by that is that. You know, the desire behind a Masters product is to produce good, meaty, juicy, goodness reprints uh, that people want to absorb, and the market has done a good job of absorbing them. So we have some really high-end cards in this product that have also seen a pretty significant dip in price because of the amount of that has been opened. I would, I would consider it to be a relatively good sign that the boxes have stabilized, and then again, they continue to sit around 300 to 310 per box. All right, so let's get into this here. We're going to start off with a foil rare Leonin Arbiter. Again, it's a, this foiling is a little bit more subtle. Um, not a not a home run foil rare, but you know, not a not a train wreck either. And then we got the Weather Wayfarer. That's probably a few bucks as well. Cold Steel Heart. Oh, that wasn't a foil. Just kidding. I passed the two foils. I was like, well, that's a really interesting E Witness. I'm losing it. I'm losing it. Um, also, one of the things. I mean, between Cold Steel Heart, Eternal Witness. Lightning bolts and things like that. There is some pretty decent value in uh, in the uncommon slot, which does help. So typically speaking, like my objective is if is to recoup. Ooh, hey, foil borderless rampant growth. That's actually pretty cool. It's probably a couple of bucks as well. Just a foil uncommon, but the borderless rampant growth, very nice. Carrier thrall. Hey, finally, okay. Well, there we go. We finally hit uh, a damnation. This is, uh, you know, probably about fifteen dollars an ever playable card. Uh, seen a couple of reprints between Time Spiral Remastered and now Double Masters, but still holding steady at around fifteen. So not a bad place to be. That is a very nice rare to have. Good old Anger of the Gods, which is also a quality rare. Inquisition of Kozilek, a very nice uncommon here. And uh, we'll just skip past the rest of this stuff. Yep. Typically speaking, if I can between. The you know the mythics and the three dollar plus rares. Um, if I can hit about eighty percent of the box value in just those cards, then you know you know the, the rep, generally speaking the uncommons, the commons that have some value, uh, the other rares that uh, are you know maybe between one and three dollars, those will usually carry you the rest of the way. So anytime you have a box that hits, ooh nice Celestia, very nice. Uh, anytime you have a box that hits just between your rares and mythics over the cost of the price of the box, then you know you're you know. You're crushing it, but generally speaking, if I can hit 80% of the box value in just the three dollar rares and mythics, then you're going to have no problem getting to that uh, the estimated value or the expected value of the box and, and match the at least the box price. Pithing needle, it's been a print, reprinted enough that it's not really a hit anymore, unfortunately. And I'm just going to quickly cycle, looking for any other borderless cards, borderless commons and uncommons. So we have hit our damnation. I, you know, again, I don't know what that means for the rest of this box, other than it feels like we finally hit a part of the track, uh, the printing that uh, will be give us a different spread of rares and mythics. Hopefully, that's a good thing. Again, my other boxes have not been bad. Okay, so we got Mizix. Uh, that is not a super valuable rare, unfortunately. It is, or excuse me, mythic. Uh, it is not a a super valuable mythic. It is a mythic nonetheless, but not typically one you're like excited about seeing. Path to Exile, always good for two or three bucks. That is one of the products that, or one of the things about this product that does help is that there are so many good uncommons and commons. And if you hit, you know, borderless versions or rare versions or, or foil versions, that it certainly helps out with your expected value of your box as well. All right, we've got our Mangler, Knightly Valor, 
Grand Arbiter. It's probably only a dollar or two at this point. Not like a huge financial hit. Drug Skull Reaver. This was a car that was creeping up in value before the reprint. And, and at the time of this video, it was probably just a dollar or so. Maybe a couple. All right. So we're only at one Mythic. Uh, typical of these boxes is probably between, I would say between five and, and seven Mythics on average. Um, I have opened a four Mythic box, which doesn't feel great. Actually, the box was, the, the Mythics that were in it were actually pretty solid, but oh no, oh no, uh, Cedrus the Trader King. So I love the card, but unfortunately a Mythic that is not very valuable. This is probably only a dollar or two. Uh, not a very high value Mythic, so. Not exactly where we want to be. Shatter Gang Brothers. Hey, Lightning Bolt. Okay, cool. Not really hitting a lot of the other borderless cards either. All right, last pack of the first column. Uh, so far, being honest, not a very strong opening. Two really, really bad mythics. Uh, as far as value is concerned, they're, they're certainly fun, playable cards. Don't get me wrong. But as far as value is concerned, uh, not very valuable at all. And then as far as our rares concerned, Damnation is doing all the work for us. So... Not great. Abbot of Carol Keep, also not great. Verena the Lich Queen. So lots of bulk in this first third of the box. Okay. All right. That's all right. A lot of time left. A lot of ball game left. Hopefully uh, we can turn it around. And there again, I don't think I've seen a seal or a dock side out of this case. I actually don't think I've seen a cavern either. So still we got, we got hope. All right. Backdraft Hellkite as our next rare up. Eh, not a bad rare, not not like a valuable rare, but uh, Nim Death Mental, probably between two or three bucks as a rare. Not awful. I'm going to put that up there. A Surreal Memoir. Another E Witness. Cool. Not ever see, like, sad about seeing an Eternal Witness at the end common level, right? You're like, okay, well, that's a dollar or two. Very playable card, just eternally good. All right. Uh, we've got our Summer Bloom as our, unco as our uncommon foil. Disfigure. What is this? Hey, Consecrated Sphinx. All right. Very good. I would have been sad to open up a case of this and not pull a single Consecrated Sphinx. Uh, Sphinx is way down. You know, it was just like a $40 card before the reprint. Uh, th right now, it's probably about $22, $23. But certainly, um, just the fact that I finally pulled one of these, I've been wanting one of those. So that really does help. I will take that. Rafik of the Many. Ooh, Blood Braid Elf in the Borderless. Cool. Unearth in the Borderless. Also cool. All right, there we go. That feels a little bit better. Hopefully, it puts us right back. Uh, put us puts us in a better in a better spot. Okay. Still haven't seen any foil rares out of this box, so there's plenty of hope there as well. Uh, borderless foil rare would be sweet, or borderless foil mythic. Let's aim high. Here we go. Emissary. We're gonna get to Dromoka's command. Okay. And uh, Pillar of the Peruns. Unfortunately, not one of the more valuable rares uh, as far as lands are concerned. You'd rather see a City of Brass or something along those lines. Burning Tree, Emissary, Emissary Borderless. Fun card. Good card. All right. We're probably approaching about the halfway point in the box. Uh, if I'm being honest, right now we are way down on, uh, on value here as far as uh, cost of box versus what we've actually opened in value. But... Again, with this product, there's so many good hits that you can turn it around fairly quickly. All right, Eel Umbra. Mythic, Monastery Mentor. Probably like the third one of these I've opened out of this case as well. Mentor's not a bad hit. It's probably about $9 would be my guess. Uh, again, very middle. Like, you could certainly do worse. But uh, also, you know, not the most valuable either. So, a mid-tier Mythic, Thousand Year Storm. Uh, one of the cards I really appreciate that was reprinted in this set that was reprinted and downshifted in rarity. It was previously a Mythic, and now it's a rare in this. A good playable card, Borderless Rakdos Carnarium. Okay, and moving on. So that puts us at four Mythics, halfway through the box. That's a decent Mythic, mythic count, albeit a couple of the Mythics are, you know, essentially throwaways, but... Mythic count wise, that's a good place to be. Okay, uh, Aristocrat, yep, last breath, uh-huh. We do have a Mythic, it is a, oh no. Oh no, it's Hellkite Overlord. Oh, this is what I was worried about. It's like, is it gonna be a home run box or is it gonna be the, the bad part of the track printing which we really haven't seen yet and that kind of appears to be the case. So, Hellkite Overlord is a Mythic, it's like a dollar, not super high end, unfortunately. And then a Hydro behind that, woof. That's what that is, is this. It's a, it's a thud. We're at five Mythics, and three of those are probably $2 or less, so 
Feels bad. <laughs> Livewire Lash, Misfire Adept, uh, Thought Scour on the Borderless, sure. Okay. Yep, we're gonna need some help now, because now I'm officially afraid of our mythic counts. I don't know how many more I don't know how many more uh, uh, shots we're gonna get at having a mythic here, so uh, I'm a little more concerned now. Alright, Bear's Companion. Uh, Spy, uh-huh. Door in the Siege Tower, a very fun nostalgic card for me. Unfortunately, not a ton of value anymore. Good old Lore One block. And Master Byr Bastard Byromancer. And um, Mentor of the Meek Borderless. Yep. This is a. Uh, this probably so far is one of the worst Double Masters boxes I've opened, unfortunately. Again, still time to turn it around. You know, a couple of really good pulls can can turn things around quickly, but right now we are uh, way behind on the scoreboard. All right, Ambuscade. We've got another Mythic. It is a. Oh, Imperial Seal! There we go! Had to have it! Imperial Seal! Let's freaking go! Let's freaking go! All right, so this is still the best pull we could have as far as uh, actual individual cards is, is concerned. Obviously, there's a borderless version and, and whatnot, but still like an $85, $90 card. Imperial Seal is way down. It's, uh, it's you know, after the reprint, which we expected, but whoo, man, does that really help us out with the value of this box. Uh, you know, nice little 85 or so Imperial Seal. Uh, had to have it. Huge, huge hit for us. Very nice. And the first one out of this case as well. Good old Vencer. Not super valuable, but people love Venser and a borderless lightning bolt as well, as well as a borderless coiling oracle. Cool. That was the uh, <laughs> that was the pack we had to have. Like after pulling those other three mythics, I was like, man, we're in such a bad spot right now. Uh, Imperial seal at you know again, I think it's probably around 85 right now. Um, that goes a long way towards. I mean, that's essentially covering almost a third of the of the cost of the box. So that's huge. Borderless Foil, uh, is it Boiler Works? That's actually really good looking. Love that. Foil Bounce Land, very nice. Brindle Shout, uh-huh. Hey, Smothering Tithe, neat. All right, very good. So we needed some help from the rare spot as well, and we will never turn away a Smothering Tithe. Uh, that is probably still holding strong at around $23, $24 would be my guess. Not bad at all. And then a Micaeus Lunar, the, the, the Lunark, <laughs> the Lunatic Mark. All right, here we go. Um, no borderless cards in this pack. Tithe feels good, right? That's not bad. So now we're officially into the last column of this box. Uh, Imperial Seal, again, helps a lot. Consecrated Sphinx helps a lot. Ooh, borderless foil surgical extraction. I was kind of wondering about this because normally you're getting about three borderless cards, uh, rares or mythics per box. Uh, and uh, very nice surgical extraction. This probably isn't the most valuable card in the world anymore after you know a couple of reprints, but. I'm going to say the Borderless Foils, probably still holding strong at around $8 to $10 would be my guess. Uh, really good looking art. Love the foiling. Very subtle. Uh, beautiful card. Not unhappy about that. Foil God's Willing. Cool. And another Mythic. Well, it was a Mythic Heavy Box, or has been a Mythic Heavy Box. We are now at seven Mythics. This is Master of Cruelties. Again, not an exceedingly valuable Mythic. That's kind of the... The challenge with this part of the, the the track print that I was a little bit more concerned about was like, okay, well, I know there's a stretch of Mythics that is <laughs> not very, not particularly good. Uh, borderless Garrison as a bounce land. Domestification, sure. Yeah, so, you know, uh, seven Mythics, that's the good news. The bad news is four of them are not particularly great, but back to the good news, Imperial Seal and Consecrated Sphinx. And I love the fact that we had a borderless, uh, borderless foil surgical extraction too. That's, that's good. That's pretty spicy. All right, here we go. Uh, Augur spree. Yep. Hero of Games. Uh huh. Curious. So Chaos Warp. Nice playable card. Not super valuable. You know, maybe only a dollar or so, but very good commander card. All right, Chaos Warp. Conqueror's Flail. That's that's probably a few bucks still. Not bad. Fire Mind Vessel. Crackling Doom. Borderless regular non foil. Is it Boiler Works? Cool. All right. Probably what do we got here? One, what do we got? Six packs left? Counting the one in my hand? All right. I think we're still good for a couple borderless cards. Um, don't know if we'll have any foil there, but we should still be good for a couple borderless, like maybe a rare mythic there. So there's some hope there. All right. Let's do this. I'm going to move some piles around before I knock some stuff over, give myself some room. All right. Capture Sphere. 
Ashen Moor Liege. That's actually, I think, the first Liege we've seen of this box, which is normally you're trying to dodge those. Uh, so we got a double Liege pack. Yeah, that feels bad. Okay. Blood Artist, a couple bucks there. Blood Artist was the most valuable card in the pack, and it wasn't particularly close. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Sprouting Thrynax. Hyena Umbra. Hey, City of Brass. Okay, very good. This is a land we are not unhappy about seeing. City of Brass still holding strong. Probably, I'm going to say about $11 or so, maybe 12 not bad, considering the reprint especially. I mean, that card was pushing, what, prior to the reprint? $20 plus for a City of Brass? So that's a good reprint to have. Not a bad card to pull. Just an ever-playable, you know, ever-playable card. Uh, huge commander card. Oh, nice. Foil, borderless, monetary swift spear. That is our third borderless uh, foil, uncommon or common, of the box. Good-looking card. Very playable, obviously. Fiery, fall. Assassin's Trophy. Very good. Uh, nice little mid-tier rares. It's probably around 6 or $7 after the reprint. Not a bad place to be currently. And Imperial Archangel, which is just a beefy card. Growth Chamber as a borderless. Okay, cool. Three packs left. Any other gas left in this box? I'm actually surprised. I feel like we've got to be good for at least one more borderless rare. Uh, rare or mythic, but we'll see. Let's find out. Firemind Vessel, uh-huh. Hey, Shadowborn Apostle. Again, as far as a common, I think the regular commons are like two and a half dollars and the foil might still be like three dollars plus, so that is not a bad... Oh, Mana Vault, yeah, yeah. All right, Mana Vault, that is a huge hit for us and an eighth mythic of the box, probably still about 43, 44 dollars. Uh, that's a fantastic hit for us and is actually gonna go a long way towards helping us on the value of this box as well. I was not expecting that, and I but I will take it. Mana Vault, huge hit for us. It's actually the first of the non uh, of the borderless of the non-borderless that I pulled. So this is like the first first regular version of Mana Vault I pulled. Excellent. Una's Prowler, which I think is somehow only like the second one of these I pulled. All right. There we go. Man, eight mythics though. Holy moly. That's a high mythic count box. All right, two packs left. Any other juice left in this box? This box has made a nice little comeback after a pretty sluggish start. <laughs> All right, makeshift mauler. Uh-huh. Oh, wow, borderless divining top. That's a nice card. Uh, man, borderless top. What is this at? I'm going to guess, gosh, maybe 35 to 40 would be my guess. It might be a little higher than that. I, I can't. But a huge hit for us. I mean, borderless top is again. I felt like we were good for at least another rare in the borderless. So this is a this is about the best you can do in that as far as that's concerned. Uh, borderless top, very huge pull for us. Huge, huge pull. Very nice. And then a CDC blood tyrant behind that. Yeah, this box turned it around. It was pretty bleak going into this last, you know, last uh, half of the box. <laughs> nice turnaround with the seal and the vault and the top. And a foil mythic, very good. So Mol Moldroth is not like the most valuable mythic in the world. It's probably only, as a foil mythic, it's probably only four bucks, maybe five bucks, but it is a mythic and a foil nonetheless. So we will take that. Not gonna shy away from a ninth mythic of the box, a Militia Bugler. All right, last two rares. We have a Necrotic Ooze. Okay, nothing to write home about there. Anything else? And a Thraxamundar, okay. Good old Thraxamundar. Sure, why not? Young, Py Young Pyromancer in the borderless. Not bad. And a Rampant Growth to finish this off. Woo! Well, interesting last box of that inner case. Uh, Mana Vault, Imperial Seal, Consecrated Sphinx, Borderless Top, Tithe, Damnation. Really did a lot of work for us. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how this box shakes out value-wise. I think we did pretty well overall. It's going to come pretty close to... to price of box, but after a really worrisome and sluggish start, we, we made a huge comeback in the second half of the box. So that's it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, as always, if you're not subscribed already, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button for me, hit the like button for me, and by all means, drop me some comments. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. Be well out there.